Good day, this is Prophetess Wendy. Thank you so much for joining me. To my subscribers, I would like to thank you so much. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, you are more than welcome to do so. This is the true prophet of the Lord by the name of Prophetess Wendy. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day it is. I want to welcome you to my channel. Today we're discussing one of the most important things in a single woman's life. You know, when you're still dating, whether young or old, but this refers to all, born again or not. Hallelujah. That's the, be that's the beautiful thing of this thing. Uh, the top of the drop today caters for all of us so i would like to start by saying um many at times when we start dating you know we are excited when you say yes to that particular person as a woman you say yes one thing i know about us women once we get to that point where we say yes to a man, hallelujah, the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. You are that good thing. That is where you put yourself as a child of God or as a person or as a woman or as a young woman to say, you know what? I have been found. We have got the final way to accept the proposal and we can only accept the proposal if we are happy with what? With what we see. So what am I saying? Sometimes it happens that when you said yes, you were excited. You saw a few things from the first date and then second date or third date. Sometimes it was love at first sight. Sometimes it happens in any way. We cannot mention all the ways that people meet one another, but there are different ways which makes people to come together. But there are things that happens along the way. As you are not yet married to this particular man, there are things that you can avoid, you know, and say, you know what, if this man is like this, I'm not going to continue with this. First of all, I would like to start by saying there are men who are very abusive and abuse can come in different forms. And you can ask me, prophetess, but how do you tell if someone is abusive? Sometimes you cannot see because there are those that are good and perfectionist. Some of them, they just snap out, out of nowhere. You find that a person have got anger management. You find that a person cannot control their temper. You are out with them. You are in a restaurant. And then somebody, they, 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 you know, when people are helping us, you know, coming to us, the waiter coming to us, you know, the way will ask for water. You can see well, this man has no respect for these waiters. The way he speaks, it's even embarrass you sitting at the table. That's when you can pick up some of the things to say, this man has got anger issues. You find that a small things, you're just talking in the table. I told you, and now a person is hitting a table and then the water and everything just spill on the ground. And then you can see, well, I know this is not something that I want. Sometimes you're traveling together nicely in a car. Then all of a sudden, a person just snapped out of nowhere. Why? Because you refused to do certain things in the car. Maybe you were not okay. You said, you know what? I'm not ready for this. Maybe I'm ready. I'm a person who wants courtship. And then now he wants to first his way into yourself. Sometimes you're not ready. You know, when you enter into a relationship, there are those who tell themselves from where to go to say, no, I'm, I'm going to do courtship. You find that this person is violating your rights. The person takes advantage of you. You know, sometimes as a woman, the fact that you're in a relationship with a person or a romantic uh, relationship with a person, it doesn't mean that they must force themselves into you or they must do things that you do not want. If you don't want certain things, you tell them from the way to go that I'm not those type that when you are dating first day, two days, three days, you take them to bed. Then, then you find that a person is fighting with you now they're became, becoming violent then if you said you love me and then you don't want to do one two three i cannot take it anymore you find that they put everything on the floor if there's a plate you find the plate hey it's too much why because they cannot control their anger but those are just a few examples that i can give you sometimes you find a man hitting you Sometimes you, you find yourself in the company of your friends or it's just a call that came, a colleague called you to say, hey, you know what, they said tomorrow, now it's time for COVID, tomorrow must not come. And then because the man heard the voice of a man, now they begin to interrogate you. Who is calling you? And then you say this Shadrach. Shadrach from where? Shadrach from where? Then is he your boss? No, he's not my boss. Even if he's your boss, then why is your boss calling you late at night? They want to inform you that tomorrow there will be no work because you wake up in the morning, take your bags and go to work, you waste your petrol. If you are using a taxi, you waste your money for nothing. Then now it becomes a huge fight. Now a man is hitting you to the ground. Then the following day he apologizes. You know, I don't know what happened to me, baby. Men who hit women, I'm telling you, they have a way of apologizing. They have a way, some they even have a way to make, to, to show you that, you know what, it's your fault. 
It's your fault, you know. Now you made me to hit you because of you and this man. Sometimes they explain, I was so jealous. I was so jealous of this man. But that cannot change. That hit you on your face. Now you've got bruises. You've got dark marks. You've got uh, pink marks. Whatever color of skin you are, you've got something that shows something has happened to you. Then now you become scared of this particular person. When you become scared of this particular person, it means you are no longer confident around them. Because you never know what they can do. Sometimes some of them, uh, uh, you find that you are talking. When you are talking, they even take a knife. If you ever leave me, I'm going to kill you. You find that a man has just hit you. Then all of a sudden, because of anger, you tell him, I'm going to break up with you. Then when you say you're going to break up with you, they say that I'm going to kill myself. And then after killing myself, I'm also going to kill you. Then they take out a gun. You know that those that use the word of man, they take out the gun and point at, uh, at you. If you ever think of leaving me because I love you too much, I'm going to shoot myself and shoot me and then shoot you, you know. And then now you're scared. Say, please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot yourself. And then when you're sitting at home, you feel like that is love. Because sometimes we interpret love in different ways. We say that is love and that is not love. The women that are in the graveyard today, the women that we read about in the news where people are fighting against gender violence, where people are fighting for the rights of women and the violation of women. Today, when you are reading, you feel like, ah, it's not going to be me. But it starts from small thing. A small thing can become a big thing. Then you say, hi, no, he was just upset. Now we are okay. You know, for us who are doing counseling and you ask, how's the relationship now? Now it's much better. Mom, Fundisi, mother pastor is doing so well. He has apologized. We even sent this brother to come and apologize. You are not yet married to this person. Why do you want to stay in an abusive relationship? When we say a woman is being disrespected, it's when we talk about things like that. When you are being kicked, sometimes you find that you are pregnant. A man is kicking you, kicking your belly like a ball. But still, you still want to forgive this man because he loves you or he's got much money more than you. Or now you don't want to go back and tell your family, I'm wearing a ring. But it's just a ring. But hey, the things that I'm going through, sometimes a man can abuse you emotionally. You find that a man is overprotective. He no longer wants you to be friends with your friends. It once happened. One of our family members, you know, she was married, separated from everybody else. Even during the time of a relationship, we could see, woman, hey, this man wants her for herself. But we interpreted it to say, you know what, he loves her to death. But we realized when she was married to say she was not happy because her neighbors were not allowed to see her. Her friends were not allowed to see her until the family intervened and she ran and came home and told us what she was going through. So what I'm, I'm saying, sometimes it might be small as you are dating and becomes flames when you are married. Uh, flames that you cannot control. You have to call the fire department. By the time the fire department gets there, only to find that the house is burned beyond recognition. So what am I saying? Things like that you can afford them. During the early stage of dating, you can afford, if you can avoid it even now because you are not yet married to the particular person. But I'm from the if I leave him, he's going to kill me. I'm telling you, there's something that we call a protection order. You go speak to the police that I'm in love with this person and this person is not stable mentally. Because some of these people are affected mentally. Sometimes you're dating a, a, a mental patient. Uh, not all are mentally disturbed. But some are just abusive because of the things they went through as children. Some are abusive of different reasons. Some, they have never had the role model of someone living right before their eyes. They don't know how to take care of women. The Bible says a woman, a man who hits a woman is a man who does not love himself. So why get involved with a man who does not love himself? Do you expect a man who doesn't love himself to be able to love you? So what am I saying? If you are in a relationship like that where a man keeps on hitting you from time to time, you've got bruises, now you have to take a sick leave because you don't want to be seen or you have to wear sunglasses. Now it's cold, but you find yourself wearing sunglasses trying to hide. You know how to protect our partners, trying to make them look good in the eyes of other people. Men like that, I'm telling you, it's not a man that would say, I want to spend the rest of my life with because to change them is going to take you years. You have no ability to change a man. The person who can change God, it's God. 
God alone, you can do whatever that you want. Ask people that are married today or people who are divorced from a dysfunctional home because of a man that was abusive. They will tell you that it took me so many years to change this man. And now we were married. When you are married, it's worse because you are trying to keep and respect your vows. But if you are not married and you're free bed, why not move out of that relationship and try to find a man who will love you and respect you with dignity? Say, why will I find this man? God will provide. He's the... Sorry, is the originator of marriage. You know where your good partner is. God does not like it when we cry in marriage because he's the originator. He wanted us to enjoy marriage. That's why he likened the kingdom of God of that one to marriage. You know, the Trinity says they are one. Marriage is saying we are one. He loves marriage. He adores marriage. You know, he wants us to be happy. That's what the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes. Enjoy life with the man that you love. You love this man, but this man is hating you. A man who abuse you will end up making you to come to a point of depression where you also depress the children as well. Is that what you want for your life? Where you are not happy because once they hit you as a person, it makes you less of a person. You know, it makes you come down to that level where you feel like I'm not worth, you know, or where you feel like, you know, you are useless, where you feel like, hey, this man has power over you. No man has power over you except for God. He might be, he's not yet the head of your family because you're not one, you're not married to him. But right now you are trying to build up a family. But if a man is like that, is abusive emotionally or anyhow, where you see with this man, whenever I'm with him, I'm not happy. It's like he's draining me. It's like he's taking me to a point where I don't want to. I'm always down, you know. I'm not free around this person. I never know what he can do next. So that is not a good relationship. A healthy relationship is where you are in control. It's where you are happy. It's where you can see with this peace here. You see, you're just in a relationship, but you are depressed. You are just in a relationship and not yet married, but you are hurt. Your heart keeps on pumping blood. You have got blood, 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 blood hey, English. Blood, high blood pressure. <laughs> English. Hey, hey, it's too deep. So what am I saying? Uh, coming back to this one and being serious, you need to find a man who will love you for you and respect you and respect your opinion and respect your friendship with others because you cannot stay with one person, a man that is possessive. You can't have friends, a man that is controlling, a man that is as insecurity. Ah, that man, if he keeps on threatening, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to shoot you and he's keep on pointing a gun at you, one day he's going to do it because that is what is full of. So what am I saying? Run, run and go to a relationship where you'll be loved, where you'll be taken care of. It doesn't matter. It might be been together for two months or three years or now you are wearing a ring hey if you are not yet married listen to me do the right thing for yourself and for your kids as well because you're gonna have kids yeah you know it's not good for me i have been in a dysfunctional home where my mom was hit by my father you know i carry that memory with me as a child it's not a good one it's not what you want for your kids it's not what you want for you because you get married but tell me i'm telling you the truth you end up being divorced why? Because you will see when you are married, uh -uh, this is not what I want. And by then it will be too late. Now you are 20, you will be 45. By then you still want to get married again and have kids. By the time when you have reached your menopause. <laughs> anyway, I'm wishing you all the best. Pray to God, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and to get out of this relationship. Start a new chapter, my sister. Oh, you look at yourself, you're forever tired. Even when you're wearing makeup, we cannot see you. You are being swallowed in this relationship, you know. We can't even see your skin color now. You have developed this tone that we cannot explain. Why? Because you are depressed, you are oppressed. No, you need a relationship where you can shine like a star and be appreciated, being brighter and brighter each and every day. No, you being darker and darker and darker, dim to a point where you cannot see anything. No, you need to be brighter, my sister. Tell some way where you can be valued, some way where you can be loved. It's not love to be beaten and a man says, I love you too much. That's why I'm hitting you. Now you've got bruises. Now you, one day you end up with no eye. One day you end up with whatever. You know, there's so many things that we can say that we saw that we cannot mention and we don't wish it on you. We're telling you now while there's still time to say what? Find a proper guy who will love you for you, who will not hit you, who will talk to you when there's a problem. You resolve the problem. In the name of Jesus, I love you. Take care of yourself, girl. Take care of yourself. I love you.